Welcome to the overview video about the EMC2 project. EMC2 is a platform project on embedded microcontrollers for mixed criticality applications in dynamic and changeable real-time environments such as mobility, industry and the Internet of Things. The project is coordinated by Werner Weber from Infineon, although many experts have contributed to this video. The EMC2 project has a budget of about 94 million euro. The consortium is composed of about 100 partners from 16 European countries. EMC2 has been the largest Artemis project ever. In this video, you can find the following information about EMC2. Project background, what EMC2 technical results are, and the results in application fields covered by EMC2. First, let me provide some background on the project. In the past decades, we have had very fast technological advances of microelectronics and achieved amazing capabilities with lower cost levels. As you can see here, there has been a doubling of transistor count every two years. At the same time, design and system implementation productivity did not rise at such high pace. Systems were quickly put together since the next technology generation was already waiting around the corner. Primarily, exploitation was done in consumer-oriented products where errors may have been tolerated and a new execution attempt started. This and similar ways of handling errors may have been acceptable for consumer products. In professional areas such as automotive, avionics, space, industry, healthcare and infrastructure, the consumer approach is not acceptable since they need considerably higher level of operational reliability. The EMC2 project has in focus systems that are characterized by higher hardware and software complexity. They have to fulfill real-time safety requirements and require dynamic reconfiguration during runtime. The prime task of EMC2 is to bring two worlds together. The consumer world, which uses advanced microcontrol systems, and the professional world, characterized by high reliability and complexity and fulfillment of real-time requirements. In EMC2, we have applications for automotive, avionics, space, industry, healthcare and infrastructure. Our goals are to improve performance, lower cost and energy efficiency in those applications. So, what are the technical results obtained in the EMC2 project? A service-oriented architecture was developed on multi-core embedded systems. Systems are now getting more complex with powerful multi-core systems on chip, operating with convoluted software that is demanding in what concerns design, development, maintenance and retirement phases. In order to lower these systems and software complexity, EMC2 considered a service-oriented architecture in which systems provide to and also consume services from other systems. To enable such systems of systems to evolve beyond design time and adapt to changeable environments, they bind or begin to interact with each other at runtime. This is made possible with a service registry that keeps track of service providers available and matches them to service consumers with an orchestration service. For security and IPR, such exchange has to be permitted by the authorization service. Additional support services exist for issues such as fault tolerance and quality of service. Several of the demonstrators developed in the living labs use the service-oriented architecture to achieve safe, secure, reliable and flexible systems of systems running on multi-core processors. Here is an example of one of these demonstrators a car with mixed criticality features that has drive-by-wire, traction control and ABS. It also can, at runtime, interact with other vehicles, with the infrastructure or be part of a hardware-in-the-loop simulator. The EMC2 reference service-oriented architecture addresses the following functionalities. 
adaptability in dynamic and changing environments, system security and system level convergence of real-time capabilities, service interoperability, safety and fault tolerance concepts, energy usage and computation efficiency, IPR protection within microprocessor system on chip, and performance predictability. However, it has limited real-time capabilities and relies on the results of technical work in EMC2 to offer such capabilities. We want to optimize the quality of service in mixed criticality applications. As a use case, we take the avionic control and payload platform for multi-rotor systems containing a safety critical part with multiple hard real-time constraints and a computation intensive mission critical part. The solution is to integrate them on the same execution platform, sharing a processor core. In the service-oriented architecture, approach tasks are scheduled according to their worst-case execution time. Let's see what happened in the static schedule scenario. Each frame has 167 milliseconds, which means 6 frames per second. We need 6 frames per second to achieve a reliable detection with moving objects. The flight control system takes up to 104 milliseconds and leaves 63 milliseconds for the mission critical part. In this case, the option is to obtain a resolution of 300 per 200 pixels in 58 milliseconds. This leads to a degraded image quality, but it is feasible. The worst case execution time is often very over pessimistic. In 95% of our cases, we are below 64 milliseconds. We start with the flight control system. When reaching 64 milliseconds, we switch to high criticality, that is, quality is degraded. When ready before 64 milliseconds, we switch to low criticality, that is, high quality. The evaluation shows that in 30 runs, 17 were in high quality mode and 13 in degraded mode. The average video throughput was 82% higher and there is a high degree of flexibility in the parameters. Note that timing in the simulation was under high level and pessimistic assumptions. In real cases, we assume even better results. A broad objective of EMC2 is to enhance the European knowledge in mechanisms and architectures for the existing runtime environments that are able to support mixed critical systems, security techniques, safety and real-time properties. In the scope of work, more than 40 mechanisms and solutions were developed that can be classified in two major breakthrough technologies. The first breakthrough concentrates on the safe and dynamic network reconfiguration. It includes mechanisms responsible for handling traffic congestions, mixing different communication criticalities, as well as assuring transmission safety, such as guaranteed latencies of throughput. In this context, our partner's work is concentrated on automotive networks, such as automotive Ethernet and on-chip interconnects, as for example, networks on-chip for real-time systems. An excellent example of the delivered mechanisms is the Distributed Congestion Control for Safety and Comfort, delivered by NXP. The main goal of this solution was to avoid communication bottlenecks during vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication on congested highways that is more than 300 cars on one kilometer multi-lane highway. Consequently, mechanisms were developed to allow transmissions with high reliability. This means more than 99% probability for receiving two messages per second in 125 meter range, as well as keeping the channel load at 70% to reserve room for emergency transmissions. The second breakthrough technology cluster comprises mechanisms for safe and dynamic virtualization. The main goal was to enable advanced embedded applications, such as autonomous driving or advanced driver assistance systems, through isolation between safety critical parts and user domains. Examples of developed technologies are security-oriented virtualization for protecting bare-metal virtual machines, lightweight communication protocols for safe virtualization, or distributed network hypervisor for admission control in on-chip networks. Hardware architectures and related concepts are explored in the EMC2 project. 
During the project, 25 different hardware technologies were explored in six different tasks and integrated in 10 different use cases. These are a few examples from a large palette of technologies developed. The Analog Mixed Signal Power System, or AMSPS, is presented by Infineon as a result of a long-term initiative to increase efficiency of power consumption and power distribution on a chip. It is an innovative mechanism to regulate power on a chip. The power system has been implemented on a prototype chip and demonstrated in the project. It should go in production within one to two years. Sundance, a company specialized in hardware development platforms for industrial applications, released a hardware platform called EMC2DP. It is a modular hardware platform designed around Xilinx Zinc system on chip. The platform has been extensively used in the project and it is already available as a product. It will also be used in further research projects as for instance the Project Tulip. The hybrid system on chip platforms that is, Zinc provides sandbox environment for hardware developers to build hardware architectures on top of the existing platform with relatively low effort. As a confirmation of this statement, partners presented at least 10 architectures based on this technology. Some examples are the Dynamic Reconfiguration Manager Architecture, System on Chip Rocket Virtual Hardware Architecture, Heterogeneous TTNOC Many Core Architecture, and 3D Time of Flight Architecture. The asymmetric multiprocessing architecture was developed on EMC2 DP platform to achieve significant performance increase using hardware acceleration techniques. It achieves an increase factor of 2.3 times when compared to the COTS ARM processor and 78 times when compared to soft coded MicroBlaze processor. The 3D time of flight architecture mentioned presents a novel approach using infrared sensors and a simple digital camera to build 3D images. It is used in automotive industry for indoor localization and feature detection. These are only a few examples of a remarkable and colorful technology portfolio. The EMC2 project served as an incubator for many technologies that are yet to reach their full potential with the support of EU and national funding organizations as well as huge efforts invested by the partners. A specific challenge in today's development environments is caused by the increasing complexity and the required richness of features. Furthermore, numerous legacy systems in industrial context still need to be ported to new hardware platforms, such as multi-core or even parallel computing units, as for example, field programmable gate arrays. However, system internal qualities, such as maintainability and change friendliness, are very often well hidden inside huge implementation details, whereas only core features are visible to the user and marketing managers. A well-known software change disaster was the distance calculation of different team software based on the different units, such as foot and meter, which caused a Mars rover landing failure and a loss of several million dollars. So, how can we find the right trade-off between adding functionality and keeping system quality throughout the product lifecycle? EMC2 has developed a prototypical toolchain, which makes the unvisible quality problems of feature coupling and bug fixes of features visible on source code level, executes these calculations on regular time intervals, weekly at least, and provides a very solid decision base by software change trend analytics to prioritize maintenance budget, which was not yet available in the market. Since it also supports hardware description language, VHDL, a new door has been opened to integrate hardware artifacts into the analysis. This method is applicable to large industrial projects with several million lines of code. Feature monitoring and coupling trends are calculated by combining data from source code configuration management, feature and change tracking system, and bug tracking system. With this, potentially dangerous parts and trends are identified. For example, single files which contribute to a massive amount of very important features are candidates for architecture refactoring in order to gain advantage for faster time to market concerning new features. 
future EMC2 systems are open and adaptive. These characteristics imply new levels of complexity and uncertainty, which, in turn, lead to significant challenges regarding the assurance of safety. Without adequate safety assurance, however, the full potential of EMC2 systems cannot be unlocked. In the EMC2 project, we consequently tackle two of the main challenges related to safety assurance of next-generation systems. On the one hand, there is the need to take security into equation as a potential cause for safety incidents. Thus, comprehensive tools and techniques for safety security co-engineering were developed. On the other hand, there is the problem of dynamic integration and reconfiguration of systems, which makes it impossible to completely analyze systems at development time already. Therefore, we developed an approach for conditional runtime certification of EMC2 systems, enabling systems to autonomously and dynamically evaluate their safety in a context of dynamic changes. In EMC2, we covered application fields such as automotive, avionics, space, industrial manufacturing, logistics, the Internet of Things, healthcare, a railway application and seismic surveying. Next, we will give you more details on the work developed in some of these application fields. In the automotive sector, the number of electronic control units has increased significantly during the last years. Nowadays, vehicles may have over 100 electronic control units for all the different electronic systems. Each system, radio, air conditioning or engine management, has its own electronic control units, specialized for its individual criticality level. In the EMC2 project, we have been able to show that this number can drastically decrease by using a network of multi-core electronic control units, which are able to deal with different levels of criticality. In this first example of EMC2 application in automotive, we show how software updates can be performed in a safe and dynamic way for an upcoming electronic control unit. This scheme shows how electronic control unit updates are currently performed. The whole electronic control unit is flashed with one image, which includes all applications to be run on it. The positive aspect is that there is no interference or resource violation. The disadvantage is that no update of single applications is possible, which increases the time needed to provide bug fixes for the applications. Here, you see how updates are currently performed on a PC that allows flexible software updates. However, interference or resource violation may occur, which is not acceptable for safety-critical applications. In this last scheme, we show a possible future electronic control unit's configuration that is able to deal correctly with resource guarantees and has enhanced flexibility for safety-critical applications. This is done with a so-called manifest, which safeguards the update process, for example, by reserving guaranteed resources for safety-critical applications. Here is another example of an update for an application that provides information on a coming traffic light. When an update is available for the application in the manufacturer's server, the user has to confirm that he accepts the update. The next step is a safety check, done with the support of a manifest, as shown here. When all needed resources are available, the update can be installed without endangering safety-critical applications. Let's now look at avionics application. Currently, certification authorities for aviation applications have concerns on mission safety critical applications on multi-core processors due to the unpredictable timing interference that causes difficulties in defining a worst-case execution time for a critical avionic application. Therefore, potential solutions have been identified and developed with the aim to mitigate safety and approach certifiability against DO178C and DO254 standard. These solutions consist in adding additional features to the existing safety net, namely, first multi-core avionic watchdogs, HWSW, second a timing interference detection feature, SW. Here we highlight the solution on a quad-core processor board for which the real time of critical application is guaranteed even when a non-critical application failure tries to use more CPU throughput than what was allocated. 
Another possibility to enable multi-core use in safety-critical avionic applications is also possible with the use of a pacemaker technology. This technology allows guaranteeing a certain performance of several cores to ensure the correct execution of safety-critical applications, such as a pacemaker for humans that ensures proper heart functioning. Our technology is based on continuous performance monitoring and performance boosts in case of deviations. We are monitoring the boosts in a fully non-intrusive way. This means that existing applications can be transferred to a target multicore without any modifications. As a side effect, the monitoring also checks other processor parameters relevant for correct execution and mandated by the certification authorities. The pacemaker technology has been integrated into a demonstrator application during the EMC2 project by Airbus. The demonstrator, a helicopter terrain awareness and warning system, is a pilot supporting system. It indicates a helicopter pilot at which regions he can fly and where the terrain is too high to safely fly at a given altitude, as for example at night or with poor visibility. Obviously, the information map shown on the display must reliably follow the helicopter, since outdated information can have catastrophic results. For the demonstrator, the existing application has been ported to the multicore and integrated together with the pacemaker technology into a prototype avionic computer. The evaluations show very promising results, and we are confident that the technology will be transferred to product development. Now we switch to another application, visual inspection, which is an important quality control step. Our goal has been to automate visual inspection by taking pictures of objects in freefall, reconstructing 3D models based on these pictures and comparing these models to reference models. The challenge is to make the automated inspection fast and saleable. By using OpenMP to parallelize key functions, speed was improved by 300%. Moreover, internode parallelism enables free scalability by balancing load among the available processing nodes. Finally, R2 Architect was used to optimize computation time and bus bandwidth usage. These improvements make automated visual inspection commercially viable for many applications. Open deterministic networks are envisioned in this demonstrator as an enabling technology for future potentially heterogeneous and mixed criticality, systems of systems. There, distributed components or systems will be connected and integrated towards larger systems, while their individual requirements, regarding safety parameters for example, are preserved by the novel networking infrastructures. The developed system cluster consists of multiple TT Ethernet end nodes. Each node has a PC running Linux Ubuntu 14.04 with a real-time patch. The TT Ethernet cable PCI Ethernet cards are connected via Ethernet cables to the industrial gigabit switch. This switch supports time-triggered, rate-constrained and standard Ethernet traffic flows. It enables real-time Ethernet communication over dual-redundant synchronous network channels for seamless redundancy management in high-availability real-time networks. The Network Smart Vision System automatically extracts semantic information denoted as metadata from the video data. Metadata and video streams have their own communication link, which provides certain guarantees to the associated applications. This way, the surveillance application can provide service guarantee behavior depending on the particular communication link. Communication links are composed of the rate constraint and the best effort network traffic. The latter link allows controlling video stream by quality of service. Hence, if the available bandwidth decreases, video quality also decreases, resulting in a frame drop for example. At the same time, information of high importance or real-time constraints, such as informing other cameras and clients about a person, can be sent over the rate-constrained Ethernet link. This link ensures that the messages arrive even if the network is overloaded. We are able to synchronize devices with an accuracy of less than one nanosecond. This is possible with the technology used in our devices, White Rabbit. And how does it work? Once the devices are synchronized, 
their oscillators and internal clocks, and thus, time differs in less than one nanosecond. Additionally, we are able to synchronize up to 14 nodes in a cascade configuration, maintaining the accuracy in all nodes. Timing devices can work as a boundary clock, transparent clock, and hybrid clock. A boundary clock is a device that is slave on at least one of its ports, from where it takes the timing reference, and master in the rest of the ports, giving time to the nodes connected to its master ports. A transparent clock forwards timing frames from the network master to the rest of the nodes. A hybrid clock forwards timing frames from the master to the rest of the network and also to the master reference. The benefits of using transparent and hybrid clocks are better network recovery in case of failure, synchronization is less jittery so that it is more stable. We have also developed a protocol called High Seamless Redundancy Protocol used to guarantee single point of failure avoidance by duplicating all frames and using a ring network topology. Frames are duplicated and sent on the two ports connected to the ring, so that if one node fails, data will be received on the other path of the ring. For timing, each node of the ring receives the same time reference on both ports, so first it synchronizes to one reference while the second one is a backup. In case of failure, we are able to switch over the backup timing reference and remain synchronized in zero time. Seismic processing is used to discover deposits of oil and gas on the ground, on both land and under the sea. At sea, a boat tows up to 14 streamers, that is smart cables, with air cannons and sensors. An array of air cannons fires approximately every 10 seconds, and reflected sound waves are captured by sensors. These wave signals are processed by computers that can visualize geological structures in the ground. Seismic acquisition requires very complex algorithms that must be executed within hard real-time constraints. EMC2 researched how to exploit multi-cores to improve the execution time of seismic processing algorithms. An important EMC2 result is an improved software engineering process for transforming seismic processing algorithms written in MATLAB onto C++. Using an open source seismic processing package called Seismic Lab, test runs show 2 to 60 times faster execution times. Estimates for the engineering time indicate that the improved software engineering process requires less than 10% of the calendar time and efforts required by the old way of working. In critical infrastructure projects, there is the need to process more and more video data. The key challenge is that complexity of data is increasing dramatically. This is driven from the number of cameras in the systems is increasing and higher resolution of video cameras. For that reason, we were working on the smart camera technology. The idea behind this is that if a part of the analysis can be done in the camera, there is less data to transmit between cameras. Therefore, system and computation can be parallelized. This idea is basically similar to modern fog computing architectures. Engineering processes for creating smart cameras face three main challenges. Data processing needs to be fast enough. Development time of the system needs to be short enough, means affordable and fit the market window. And the final cost of the product needs to fit the market space. Within the EMC2 project, usage of the platform provided allowed a fast implementation cycle. Using a modified algorithm from the University of Brno made it possible to set up a high-level synthesis flow that works with the platform implementing new algorithms into a hardware platform that later can be used within a smart camera. The project achieved significant improvements. The time required for face detection was reduced from about 3 seconds to approximately 20 milliseconds. This was done comparing the prototype to running face detection algorithm on a PC with an Intel i5 CPU. Using C-based algorithm development requires 80% less effort compared with a classical HDL approach once the board support package is available. The final demonstrators showed a smart camera board for face recognition and a complete smart camera for license plate recognition. Both systems can be built with the same methodology, base chip and basically similar algorithms. This shows that both key elements used, methodology and technology, are scalable. 
Based on the examination request received from the referring physician, the radiologist determines in the morning which scan protocols should be used for medical imaging. So, how does this process work? Somewhere during the day, the real MRI exam is planned, which takes 20 to 45 minutes. Only during this time frame, the patient is at the MRI scanner. Once the scan is done, the patient is dismissed either to his room or even home in case of an outpatient. Although some image processing is done during the scan time and a first evaluation is made by the operator, the real review of the examination data by the radiologist only takes place after the patient has left the scanning room. It is only at the moment when the radiologist is analysing the data that it becomes clear whether or not it has sufficient quality to perform a diagnosis based on that data. The solution to this problem would be to execute post-processing already at the MRI scanner. The quality check can be performed while the patient is still in the scanner by the operator using post-processing for more advanced checks. If the quality is insufficient, the scan can be done again. Multicore computing is a prerequisite to perform such post-processing on the scanner console. Note that the mixed criticality of this type of system is the main hurdle when using EMC2 technology. The target of the EMC2 project is to merge multiple hardware systems, such as host, recon, data acquisition and post-processing viewing on a single hardware system. Post-processing and viewing should be possible at the MRI scanner without hampering the low latency processors and not disturbing the real-time control by operators. EMC2 partners were able to demonstrate that three of four hardware systems can be combined into a single system, exploiting multi-core technologies. Philips will release new products based on the EMC2 results, making magnetic resonance scanners more affordable and thereby within the reach of more hospitals. At the same time, the societal costs of MR scans are reduced since patient recalls are avoided. When EMC2 started, multicore technology was not in use for railway applications with the highest safety criticality, SIL4. The goal was to enable the use of multicore technology for such applications as well as exploit the advantages that multicore brings. For this, a fault-tolerance platform called TAS Platform, which serves as a basis for safety-critical railway applications, was extended to support multicore. Furthermore, it was tested in a virtual environment, with the goal of easing recertification and revalidation in case changes to parts of the overall system were needed. The first major achievement of EMC2 is the adaptation of the hardware health monitor to support in tests with multicore hardware. This health monitor is an essential part of the safety concept, guaranteeing fault-free operation through several hardware checks. Here, the main challenge was the synchronization of the memory test running on multiple cores. This health monitor will be part of the next version of TAS platform, which will be released in August 2017. The TAS platform was also successfully deployed as a personality of Pike OS, enabling easier recertification and revalidation, as well as mixed criticality approaches. Standardization activities played a major role in EMC2, since the results and achievements contributed considerably to general functional safety and cybersecurity standardization in areas such as industrial process measurement, control and automation of the International Electrotechnical Committee, IEC, and also for automotive standardization in the International Standardization Organization, ISO. Partners took advantage from the open windows of opportunity of emerging new groups and recently started maintenance phases, creating new additions of established functional safety standards, thus shaping the evolving standardization landscape. In the Basic Functional Safety Standard, IEC 61508, EMC2 has triggered the uptake of new key topics that require additional guidance. Extended guidelines for consideration of the impact of cybersecurity threats on safety and the challenge of multicore architectures for safety certification in these standards. Other topics influenced by EMC2 work are Consideration of new paradigms such as safety augmentation in case of uncertainty and dynamic. Adaptive systems. 
contract-based design and runtime certification, as developed in the technical work package on system qualification and certification, and various validation and verification issues such as toolchain qualification and interoperability. Additionally, EMC2 partners promoted and supported framework activities in IEC ad hoc groups and a joint working group with ISO on automation systems and integration. All this lead to holistic approaches regarding system safety, security, reliability and performance, which will result in technical reports and specifications. One of the highlights of standardization activities in the automotive domain was the successful implementation of mandatory safety and cybersecurity co-engineering and interaction aspects in the functional safety standard ISO 26262 for the next edition of 2018. Additionally, EMC2 partners promoted and supported complementary activities with respect to automotive cybersecurity standardization ISO 21434 as shown in the trustworthy automotive systems graph. Moreover, contributions to the public available specification on safety of the intended functionality, which is a pre-standard, paved the way towards safety in dynamic systems challenged by uncertainty in perception of the environment and limitations of sensors and algorithms, which may lead to safety violations even in absence of faults. This is most relevant for assessing safety of highly automated driving and future autonomous vehicle systems of all kinds, may it be on the road, off-road, for farming or construction engines. Standardization included monitoring of related activities in other groups for automotive safety and security, for example the upcoming workshop activities on automotive sensing and the standards on extended vehicles, which cover the aspects of connected cars communicating with each other and with infrastructure for traffic management, vehicle maintenance and inspection, fleet management and infotainment. This is of great importance for future autonomous driving. These works are ongoing. The final standards documents are expected between 2018 and 2020, depending on the progress in the various standardization organizations. For more information on the EMC2 project, check out the public webpage with regularly updated information whenever news, events and other information for publication becomes available. The research that led to these results received funding from Artemis Joint Undertaking under Grant Agreement Number 621429, EMC2, and from 16 national funding organisations.